So let's do a little myth busting video on these LS standalone harnesses. There's a whole bunch of different companies on the market that are selling harnesses. They all claim to be better than the rest. Some on Facebook Marketplace, some guy over in Australia, some Chinese guy selling them, saying they're built here and they're built better, blah, blah, blah. Even halfway decent companies, I'm not going to say any names, but this harness in particular was like a $300 harness that was supposedly made in the USA and was better than all the rest. And I could tell you from doing 50 plus swaps, these cheap harnesses, they're all the same, all the same from the same company, from the same manufacturers, everything. They're all cheap stuff. So if you're going to buy cheap, might as well buy a $100 or $80 harness off eBay because they're all going to be the same. So like I said, I bought this one for like three or $400. It was supposed to be all nice and better and everything, but it's not. If you see a fuse box that looks like this, with two relays that look like this, they're all the same company. I don't care what they say. The wires are small, they're cheap. They get the job done, but there's weird stuff inside of them. Um, so if you're gonna buy one of these harnesses, just be prepared, be prepared to do some rewiring and know how to do it, you know? Greg, go on to LT1 Swap or whatever and get wiring diagrams and pinouts and everything. And you'll, you'll figure it out quickly that the harnesses are, they're not right. Even if you order it for your specific application, like this one was, uh, this was supposed to be for a, you know, a Gen 3 with a 4L80. It was wired for a 4L60. I had to change all that wiring, blah, 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 blah. Um, the alternator I noticed after a day or two was buzzing. When the, when the key was off. And so I knew there was another problem in the harness. And I figured it out. I chased the, I chased the wiring back and found it to be a problem with the, uh, tack and the OBD2 port. Um, they're all kind of wired together on the same power circuit here, which I don't know why. They all come out of here. One of them goes directly into the ECM, spot 10, the tack signal. And then one of them goes to directly to the tack. This is the tack output wire. And then the other one went to the OBD2 port. So they all have power all the time. Now the problem is, is with it being connected directly to these, to this wire, and having power going to it all the time, it's back feeding through the ECM back to the alternator, causing the alternator to go live all the time, which will kill batteries and everything. And you could distinctly hear the alternator buzzing when it was plugged in. And now it's dead quiet. And, you know, you have to change the wiring to make the tack work and everything. Mine, mine doesn't. So what I did is... the the wire that came out of the ECM, I just snipped it. The one that came out of the ECM that goes to the power box. So it won't back feed back into the ECM. I don't need the tack output because mine's wired directly from the alternator to the, to the gauge on this truck. Um, but if you needed the alternator to work, you'd have to figure, you'd have to get this tack wire out of power from the ECM and then probably run it straight to this wire and then leave that white wire going to the OBD2 port for your power. But anyways, yeah, like I said in the beginning, if you're going to buy a cheap harness, just buy the cheapest possible one you can find and you're going to have to do some rewiring or go to like Holly or whatever that sells custom built harnesses and pay the $700.